get this thing drained out. As I told you in the last video, we were going to drain it out because a bunch of mud gets in these things when you install them. Rocks cut out of quarters have dirt on them. You usually got a pile of dirt somewhere that washes in. If you can kind of see on the liner here, the remnants of the mud that was left, we took out about 14 gallons of dirt out of this thing. And there's still a little bit left. If you look down in here, you can still see some of that mud in there. Little bits like that, we're going to fling to the side. We're really not going to worry about, but the key is we got the mud patties out of it. it and all that does is cloud up the water and make it dirty. But I want to take this time to show you while this thing's empty, I talked about with the hole. You saw the hole before the liner. I talked about how it went from shallow to deep. Right here, it's close to two feet. And down in here, we're, we're at three and a half feet. The water line's right just under this stone here. And as you can see, that's that's about three and a half feet deep, which is what we want for the big koi. All right, now, a lot of folks ask, how do we build the waterfall? And if you look here, you can kind of see this, this ledge right here goes back to about here, then it comes straight it, it comes straight up and then there's another ledge in there. And we just started stacking our stones around and went right on top and we just layered it up right into our fall. And if you can see this stuff here, it's already started to turn brownish green. And that's what you want. This is waterfall foam. You spray this stuff in between the rocks, it keeps the water from going in between all the cracks and holes, and it keeps it going straight over the top and it'll come down into the pond. And we've, we've foamed, foamed both of these falls. And you can see what we do, we kind of break it apart after we spray it. When you spray it at first, it looks pretty bad. But once you're done spraying it, you can take a razor knife or just simply start pulling it apart with your fingers. And what's stuck to the rock and stone will stay stuck to the rock and stone. And then it'll become real porous. And that water flowing over there will turn that stuff whatever color the water is. And all the little dirt and debris that's in the water will fill those pores in, and then you won't even see it. It'll blend into the rocks around it. And you can see on this fall, now you've seen this fall running, the water kind of goes over the top like this, and then just falls right down into the pond. So we just sealed the sides here, just right along the sides to keep that water from going back behind the stones. It keeps it going over the stone and down in the front. And then you can see on this one over here, obviously there's a lot more layers here. So we foam all the way around, down in here, over in here, all these little nooks and crannies and voids are all foam. And again, you can see the color already starting to change. It's starting to blend in beautifully. Now, the, the skimmer end of it. I showed you earlier, I kind of just made mention, we've got two entry points coming in. Here you can clearly see them. This is the bog area here, and that water's going to come right through here into the skimmer back in here. On the main pond, it's going to come right in here and go right into that skimmer there. And again, we talked about our fake stone hiding this thing. Nice and light. I can rip it right off and get to the pumps if I need to. We can show you real quick the pumps inside this thing. And if you see from up and running, our skimmer basket's working. We got a pump here and we got a pump buried down in here. That water, that's one reason we drained it out after we got it running. That water started getting pretty bad. You can see it there, but there's a pump here and a pump at the end here. And both of these are quick connect. All we got to do to pull this pump out is pull these rings here. And on this one here, we use two different kinds of hose to show you the difference. This one here, we just undo a clamp. This is flexible hose here. This is PVC here, but it's flexible. Uh, it'll bend. You'll be able to make slight bends with it. But when it comes to going straight down and making sharp 90s, you have to use fittings. The flexible hose is obviously flexible enough. We don't need any fittings. The PVC is a glue type connection. The flexible hose is a clamp type connection. So those are the two differences in the hose. And then our cage just simply fits right over the top here, just like that. And then it pulls all that debris in there. And you can see from when we had this thing running just for a short period of time, the waterfall foam we trimmed out. Some of your oxygenators, if they're not weighed down properly, they'll end up in there. But it gets it all right into this basket. You can take the basket out and simply just dump it just like that. It gets all that stuff out of there. Then you put your basket back in and you're ready to go. Okay, now, the other thing we want to take a look at, let's go over some of the stonework real quick. A lot of folks get tripped out with the stonework. And the stonework is actually the quickest and easiest part. We've chosen to use a weathered field stone here. And if you look 
We didn't spend much time stoning this thing. We got a chain gang going, and we just started placing stones on the rock and forming, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle without a box for reference. We just started going around this thing on our way up, and you can see how it's layered. Now you saw when this thing was full, the water line was right up in here. And then this 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 ledge right here separating the bog. Joe, you're gonna get this here separating the bog from the main part. Just these top, just the top parts of this stone was was exposed. And again, that's gonna keep our big koi out of our plant area, which is what we want. Alright, now keep in mind we do have two filters. So this thing is gonna be filtered very well. We've got the stone work. The liner that's not exposed to the stone will hold up for 20 years. It's guaranteed for 20 years. It's a 45 mil liner. A lot of folks are going to want to throw rock in the bottom of this thing, and a lot of installers will too. Even a lot of retailers will. We're not going to do that. I don't put rock in the bottom of my pots because once you do that, you're committed every year to draining this thing out on a regular basis and power washing it out. And after about five years, you have to get rid of the rocks. So I leave my liner bare. You're going to get a liner of what's called patina growing on there. You want that. It helps filter your water and it's going to disguise that liner. You won't even see it. And in ponds that are deep like this one, three and a half feet, you're not even going to see the bottom of it. But you'll be able to see that a dime if you throw a dime on the bottom of it if you have a good filter. And that's what we want. That's the look we're going for. And without the stone on here, if we do get debris buildups, we can simply vacuum it out. And, and it'll be gone or take a net and net it out once you put stone on the bottom of these things and gravel especially if it starts getting two three inches thick that debris gets down in the gravel and it turns into a sewer once that gravel beds turned into a sewer your water is green and there's no getting around from it you're gonna have to drain it and clean that gravel out so that's why we're not putting any gravel in this thing stay tuned for your next video we're gonna have this thing up and running the water's gonna be clear we're gonna have plants in it It'll stay clear, it'll be beautiful. Come see us again at pondmarket.com.